chapter 7 is about the formation of a company. So here we are learning about how you can form a company. So we have learned in our previous uh, classes that there are different forms of business organization like sole proprietorship, partnership, uh, join Hindu family or company. So these are the forms of organization you can choose which you can you want to set. So here it is uh, we are um, studying about the formation of a company, how you can form a company. The formation of a company is a complex activity involving completion of legal formalities and procedure. That is, uh, to form a company, you have to um, look after a lot of formalities and procedures. There are a lot of formalities and procedures you have to uh, sign. So, to fully understand the process, one can divide the formalities into three stages. So, these formalities you can divide into three stages. That is, promotion, then incorporation and subscription. These are the three uh, procedures you have to follow while forming a company so the first one is the promotion promotion of a company what is promotion promotion is the first stage in the formation of a company this is the first stage in the formation of a company it involves conceiving a business idea and taking in initiative to form a company so that practical shape can be given to exploiting the available business opportunity that is you are deciding what uh, what type of business you are going to start so you can uh, take an initiative to form a company and you can give it a practical shape you can uh, put it into existence firstly you have to decide what type of uh, business idea are you are going to take that is the promotion stage so this promotion stage is mainly uh, done by a person that is known as a promoter such a person or a group of persons or a company proceeds to form a company they are said to be promoters that is the one who is willing to start a company or set up a company or form a company is known as a promoter so there are certain functions of the uh, promoter so the promoter is one who undertakes to form a company he is the one who undertakes to form a company so looking at the functions of the promoter the first one is identification of business opportunity so you have to identify what type of opportunity you can tackle and what type of uh, uh, products or uh, goods does the consumer need so uh, by looking at by taking a research you can identify what type of opportunity you need to create so what type of opportunity you can take and you can, if you are uh, willing to face the risk and face the challenges then you can certainly go for starting a company so first you have to identify the opportunity or what type of product you have to sell or what kind of business or um, business are you going to start next is feasibility study uh, it, uh, that is feasibility means you cannot convert every needed thing into ideal project that is you have to look at what is the most feasible one the most uh, uh, we are having a lot of uh, choices from that the best choices of which to start a business you can select so most feasible one which you can start with low cost or with uh, less money we can start then that is more beneficial because that is why you can uh, have a good feasible study you can choose which you can follow under feasibility side can be f uh, technical feasibility sometimes an idea may be good but technically not possible to execute idea is good but you doesn't have technical support to do it so you have to look at look if that is possible next is financial feasibility that means you require funds so if you have uh, you have to start an organization uh, by looking at what or how much fund you have it should be large or small large organization or small organization it should depend upon uh, how much finance you have then next is economic uh, feasibility so that is uh, Sometimes uh, it so happens that a project is technically well financially feasible but the chance of being profitable is very little. That you can do it and you, you have uh, money to do it and technically is it, po it is possible but maybe profitability is very little. You will not get more profit. So you have to look all the cases. You have to look the economic uh, if it is economically possible you will get profit or not or you have cash or you have technical assistance if all uh, becomes uh, positive then you can start thinking of doing it like that and if you have any anywhere you have some problems then you have to decide it accordingly so after feasibility study it is name approval that is having deciding uh, decided to incorporate a company the promoter has to select name for it and submit an application to the registrar of companies 
uh, of the state in which the registered office uh, the company is to be situated so what you have to do is once you have uh, looked at the feasibility study then you have to give a name to your company so you can you should uh, decide a name for your company and you have to inform your register of company in the place in which you are going to start your company next is uh, fixing up signatories to the memorandum of association promoters have to decide about the members who will be signing the memorandum of association of the proposed company who will be signing memorandum association will be looking at in detail so that is a document so you have to decide who which members or who all will be signing that document so usually the person signing memorandum firstly are the directors of the company then you have to appoint after signing you have to appoint per professionals that is certain professionals such as mercantile bankers auditors appointed by the promoters assess them preparation of necessary documents while carrying on a business activity you have to appoint these uh, promoter uh, bankers auditors so they can assist you uh, to prepare documents according to your business uh, operations in preparation of necessary documents that is you have to prepare necessary documents uh, like uh, um, memorandum of association articles of association to the registrar of companies now you are going to look at what are the documents they said preparation of necessary documents the documents first one is memorandum of association it is the most important document defines the objectives of the company it states the objectives of the company what is the goal of your company so you cannot do something that is not mentioned in the memorandum of association according to what is written in memorandum of association you have to act on that way so no company can legally undertake activities that are not contained in memorandum of association so what are contained in the memorandum of association is the name clause that is it it uh, includes the in name of the company with which the company will be known next is registered office clause it includes the name of the state which the registered office of the company is proposed to be situated where the registered office is situated it will contain the uh, name of the state then object clause object clause is nothing but it uh, it states the uh, purpose for which the company is formed so a company is not legally entitled to undertake an activity which is beyond the objectives of the state of that stated in the clause so the objectives are stated in the memorandum of association so you cannot take undertake an objective which is not uh, mentioned in the memorandum of association next is liability clause what is what would be the liability of the members is they are unlimited or limited or according to that according the shares owned by them then capital clause that is capital clause means what is the maximum capital that the company can uh, raise through issue of shares they can issue share and they can raise capital so what is the maximum amount a company can raise for example that is uh, uh, you can a company may be the authorized capital may be 25 lakh divided into 2.5 lakh shares or rupees 10 each so you can offer these 2.5 lakh shares of rupees 10 each to the uh, public and you can raise the capital So first one was memorandum association second one is articles of association these uh, articles of association are the rules regarding internal management of the company how a company should be internally uh, managed and these are rules are uh, subsidiary to the memorandum of association and should not be contradict or exceed anything stated in the memorandum of association you cannot do anything beyond what is being mentioned in the documents so these articles of association is the document containing the rules regarding how you should work or how you should how the internal management of the company should work then the consent of proposed directors then apart from the memorandum and articles of association written consent of each person named as director is required confirming that they agree to act in the capacity undertake to buy and pay for qualification shares are mentioned in the articles of association so uh, apart from the memorandum and articles of association the consent of the directors directors are shareholders uh, or the board of directors that is they have been uh, uh, certain members are elected from the number of shareholders so they have to give a consent in writing that they agree to act uh, uh, or undertake to buy and pay for qualification shares as mentioned in the articles of associ association that is they agree to act accordingly they have to give their written consent next is agreement the agreement if any which the company proposes to enter with any individual for appointment as its managing 
director or a whole time director or manager is another document which is required to be submitted to the register for getting the comment registered under the act so you have to give the details of directors like if you are whole time director or part director you have to give the document to the registrar next the statutory declaration it is a legal uh, declaration stating that all the legal requirements pertain to registration have been compiled um, that you confine to the uh, rules and policies accordingly that you are stating that you have uh, uh, it is a declaration like uh, stating that all the legal requirements have been fulfilled and it sh should be submitted to the register which is the men men documents mentioned above that is the memorandum association articles all these should be attached with the statutory declaration and this should be signed by a chartered accountant or a cost accountant or company secretary in practice who is engaged in the formation of company next is receipt of payment of fee then for registration you have to pay the fee registration amount so amount of such fees depend upon the authorized share capital of the company so with the, the uh, um, uh, statements or documents mentioned above you have to uh attach the receipt of uh, the mm, fee fee paid next is moving to incorporation that is after completing the efforts at formalities promoters make an application for incorporation of the company that is bringing the company into existence so an application is to be uh, filed with the registrar of companies uh, in the state within which they plan to establish the registered office of the company So, what all documents are needed is uh, the memorandum association, articles of association, as we have discussed before. Then the written consent of directors, then the agreement of the managing director as whole time or part time or whatever it is. Then copy of registrar's letter, then statutory declaration, then notice about the address of the registered office, the documents, evidence of payment of registration fee. So, all this must be submitted. so when the registrar is satisfied about the completion of formalities of registration a certificate of incorporation is issued to the company that is when all these above said uh, documents are provided to the registrar company and when he filed it is when he is satisfied with all that then what he will do is he will um, provide a certificate of incorporation to the company that is it it is the uh, it is a proof of the birth of the company that birth of the company takes place only when it receive the certificate of incorporation just the birth certificate of a company we can say it like that now we are going to look at what is capital subscription that is we said a company can raise fund from the public that is capital subscription a company can raise the required fund from the public by means of issue of shares a company can issue shares and it can raise fund for doing the same it has to issue prospectus which is an invitation to the public that is uh, you should invite the public to buy the shares of the company so there is a invitation and other formalities also should be considered now what are the steps for raising funds we can see here the first one is sebi approval sebi is the securities and exchange board of india which is the regulatory authority in a country has issued guidelines for disclosure of information and investor protection a public company inviting funds from general public must make adequate disclosure of all relevant information and must not conceal any material information from the potential investors that is when you want to uh, share uh, capital subscription you are subscribing cap for capital when you are inviting the public when you are inviting what you have to do is you have to give or you have to disclose all the facts all the information about your business and you should not hide anything so this is necessary for protecting the interest of investors so the approval from sebi is required so before raising one you have to get the approval of the sebi then only you can start to invite the public next is filing of prospectus that a copy of prospectus a statement of profits filed with the registrar of companies prospectus is document described or issued as a prospectus including any notice circular advertisement or other document it can be in the form of a notice or a Uh, uh, circular or advertisement it can mean any other form inviting deposit from the public that you inviting public to buy the, your shares and give them capital give them money or you can say that it is an invitation to the public to apply for securities 
of the company to make deposit in the company asking them to deposit your money in the company by purchasing the shares of the company next is appointment of bankers raising funds from the public is a stupendous task the application money is to be received by the bankers of the company so through the bank only you can receive the task uh, the fund so raising this fund is a complex process so if to appoint bankers brokers underwriters so they uh, the brokers try to sell your shares and the bankers try to collect your shares uh, collect your money so appointment of bankers brokers and underwriters is important Next is minimum subscription. In order to prevent companies from commencing business with inadequate resources, it has been provided that the company must receive application from certain number of shares before going ahead with the allotment of shares. This is that a company must at least get a minimum amount specified. If it doesn't get to the minimum amount specified, then it cannot carry out its activities. This is known as the minimum subscription. The minimum amount of money it should receive by way of uh, public subscription. That is, if the applications received for the shares are less than ninety percent, if the amount received is less than ninety percent, then the allotment cannot be made. If it is more than that, then only you can function, go with the further procedures. This is the guideline of the SEBI. SEBI has uh, put this limited to ninety percentage. An application to stock exchange. An application is made to at least one stock exchange promotion deal in its share or. even just through listing and by listing in stock exchanges you can trade you can sell your shares the people buy your shares or sell the shares and you can get public subscription next is allotment of shares that is uh, once you have got the minimum subscription then you have listed in the stock exchange and in move for allotment of shares that is till the time shares are application money receive should remain in a separate bank account Well, all the application money which the public is giving you, you should keep it in a separate bank account, and it should not be used by the company. So, in in case the number of share allotted is less than the number of uh, less than the number of applied for, then or where no shares are allotted to the applicant, the excess application money needs to be returned to the applicant. If if you have not called for the uh, public for uh, uh, for allotment, and if he has already given it to you in advance, then if you have not called, what you have to do in the last is you have to give it back to the applicant. But you have return of allotment signed by a director. Allotment letters are issued to successful allottees. Then return of allotment signed by a director is filed with the register coming within thirty days of allotment. Once you have accepted the allotment, you have to send to the uh, allotment letter and then uh, otherwise you have to return of allotment that is you are not uh, willing to accept the allotment so within 30 days you have to do this once it is filed with the registrar of companies so here a uh, format is given like a memorandum association how it will look like that is it is name is included registered office the object then matters liability then share capital and several other documents uh, details have been given then you have to confirm declaration that all the above mentioned is correct and all these are written this is the format of memorandum of association so in this chapter we have looked at what is promotion then necessary documents functions of promoters what is incorporation then how you can subscribe capital then how sebi approval how you how you should Uh, how you can apply for capital subscription that is you have to get sebi approval then file a copy of prospectus then you can appoint brokers then ensure minimum subscription then list it in stock exchange then if uh, more money is received you can uh, excess money you can uh, a refund then you issue a letter to the ones who have you have uh, you have uh, admitted and then uh, you can file a return Uh, with the registrar of companies this is a procedure how you can subscribe for capital here you can see there are two terms that is preliminary contract and provisional contract preliminary contract is that contract is signed by the promoters with third parties before the incorporation of company so before the incorporation if you are signing with a third party it is not a preliminary contract and uh, contract signed after incorporation 
so if you're signing it after incorporation but before commencement of business it is known as provisional contract